Welcome to this uh, Microsoft Flow session where I will present an onboarding solution, how it looks like and uh, how I've implemented. And this is a typical example of a digital transformation. I'm Serge Luca, I'm a SharePoint MVP based in Brussels and I'm also uh, the author of a masterclass Microsoft Flow, which is a workshop. If you are interested in this workshop, don't hesitate to, to call me. So now let's take a look at the uh, onboarding solution. And the idea is that when there is a new employee in the company, uh, a set of steps need to be taken. So for instance, the employee will be the employee detail will be recorded in a SharePoint list, and then the employee will have to sign. Uh, is contract. The contract needs to be signed by the employee but also by the manager. When it's done, then uh, the employee will have an email address. So most specifically, he will have an Office 365 account. So he will have a presence in Active, Active Directory, in Azure Active Directory. Um, so let's do this. So here, this is the onboarding SharePoint list. And let's create a new employee. There's a green salary contract starting date, contract end date 2019, position astronaut, and of course. Uh, the new employee doesn't have uh, a corporate email address. It just has it just have a private email address. So the contract will have to be sent to this private email address. So let's provide okay, let's double check to make sure everything is okay. And when I save this, automatically, a flow will be triggered and the flow will create on the fly a document, so the contract, that will have to be signed by the employee. So the contract will be sent to the employee private email address. So let's go to uh, the email address, as you can see here, 144, so it's this one. I've got a new email and when I click here, I will see the email. Okay, so you can see that the document has been created and merged with data stored in the SharePoint list. I will show you how I did it. Uh, now the employee need to sign the contract here. So, so you can just type your name or you can draw a signature. Okay. Just confirm the signature. And of course then the, the, the manager will have to sign the same contract as well. So let's go to the manager email address. So I'm the manager. I've got a new, a new email here with another version of the contract. Well, it's actually the same version, but uh, the same contract, but with the employee signature. And here, this is my signature. That's why I need to sign. Okay. and I need to confirm this. When this is done, the contract will be stored into a document library. So let's go to the SharePoint site and let's go to contract. And here is my contract. So if I click on this PDF, I should see the contract detail. Okay, fine. Now the contract is signed and the employee will uh, get a Azure Active Directory account and an Office 365 uh, license. So if I go to the administration center, normally I should see a new employee, yes, Buzz Aldrin, with Office 365 EE license. Okay, so it's pretty cool. Uh, 
no, how does that work? Okay, now let's take a look at how I did create this. So it's the onboarding flow here. And of course, uh, the flow start, the flow is triggered when there is a new item in the, in the SharePoint list. And then when it's done, I will create the contract. The contract will be signed to um, both the employee and his manager. You need to wait until the contract is signed by both parties. When it's done, you take the contract and you store it into a SharePoint document library. And then you will uh, need to create a user in Azure Active Directory. So I've used uh, Microsoft Graph to do, to do so. I will show you the detail later on. And of course, when you have a new user, you can assign uh, its Office 365 license. And of course, when uh, the user has an email address, you can store the email address in the, in the onboarding list. Um, but there are several interesting parts in this, uh, in this flow. Like the first thing is, oh, you create a contract. So somewhere I've defined a contract template in Word I've uploaded it into Adobe Sign and let's take a look at Adobe Sign here. In Adobe, in Adobe Sign, I've defined a library template with a document template named ShareQL. So this has been defined in actually in Word, uploaded right here. And in this document, in this Word document, I've defined fields. So each field has a name. For instance, here, this one is full name, uh, begin date, etc., etc. You can also define the signature. So there are two signatures here, the employee signature and the, the employer signature and the employee signature. Okay. And actually, if you get back to the flow, let's go back to the flow. When you create the agreement, you need to specify uh, who will have to sign in the first place. So in the first place, it will be the, the new employee. And uh, in the second place, it will be his, his manager. So here I've R-coded the manager email address. So in the second place. But also very interesting is you can provide uh, the employee details coming from the SharePoint list into the document fields. Okay, so this action will will merge this data into the document. That's very very interesting. So of course here you need to wait until the the contract is signed by both parties. So you have to use the get the status of an agreement action from Adobe Adobe Sign. When it's done, you can grab the final PDF with the two signatures and you can store it into the SharePoint document library. Mm -hmm. And then you need to create the user in uh, Azure Active Directory and then you need to assign the license. Um, well, in the first place, I did use an action called the Azure Create User uh, action, which is very easy to use. But the problem is uh, if you want to assign an Office 365 license, you need, a, you need to fill in a specific field called, uh, I think it's acting location or something like this. Usage location, yes, it's usage location. And you cannot do that with this action. So what I did is I've used the office graph. So in the office graph, you can use the following uh, URL, users, which allows you to create a user, just provide the following information and the user will be created, okay? And also to assign the licenses, the Office 35 licenses, I've also used the Office Graph. I don't need to create an Azure function because first for some users, some developers, you don't have access to the Azure function and moreover, you have to pay for it. So here, as you can see here, I've assigned the Office 365 license by using the following Microsoft Graph URL, the iSign license. Just provide the license you want to assign. But of course, 
when you use the office graph, as I did, you need to pass an authorization token. Okay, so you need an authorization token and to get an authorization token, you need to define first an application somewhere and you need to provide to specify which permission this application requires. So I did define two applications, one for creating user in Azure Active Directory, another one for updating user officified license. So I defined them in this portal, apps.dev.microsoft.com. So here are my two applications. Um, let's take a look at this. Okay. Um, the permission are defined here. These are the permission required uh, if you want to, to change the data, in this case, to uh, assign the license. Um, so I did it. And then the other thing is, if I get back to the flow, is you need to pass the authorization token. Okay. And in the past, I did create a service flow. So a flow that can be invoked uh, through HTTP that make this job. So I've invoked this flow. So this is my service flow URL. I just need to pass the client ID, secret ID, tenant ID, and I get the token. As simple as that. So I get the token and I pass the token when I call the Microsoft Graph. So let, let's quickly take a look at this, uh, the flow that I've invoked over there. Actually, it was even in another tenant. Yes. So if you take a look at this flow, um, so it's a service flow because it starts with a, when an HTTP request is received action. Well, actually, it's a trigger. So you just need to pass the uh, the client ID, secret ID, tenant ID, and then this will generate a token. As you can see here, I'm generating the token just by passing the tenant ID, client ID, and secret ID. I'm using version 2.0 here, as you can see. There are two versions of, uh, if you want to, to grab the token. So I'm using version 2 here. This one is very important. And then you just need to parse the token from JSON and you return the token. Okay, so this, this having a such service flow is very, very convenient. If you want, of course, to use Office Graph in this case, as I did. Okay. And then, of course, when the user has an Office 365 license, that means he has an email address, then you can add this user uh, contact detail into the onboarding list. Cool, isn't it?